Hey everybody, it's Romania Black, and we're starting a brand new show today, Yona of the Dawn. So just a little background. A few months ago, I had a poll uh, to replace a show on this channel, and it was a tie between two shows who had previously taken second in my earlier polls, Stars Align and Yona of the Dawn. And so because Stars Align was shorter and for other reasons, I decided to watch it first because I didn't have room in my schedule to watch both at the same time. So we've just completed Stars Align. It's on my channel. There's a whole playlist of it. And now I'm ready to start Yona of the Dawn. I'm excited because I know nothing about this show. Absolutely nothing. I've never, I had never heard of it until y'all started recommending it. I had never seen any images or thumbnails or any clip art, anything of it. So I am going into this in the clearest term as blind. I I know nothing. Even Stars Align, I had a few people like mention what it was about and I was like, oh, that sounds cool. I don't know what this is about at all. I don't know if it's fantasy, if it's, if it's action, if it's romance, all of the above. I don't know, but that's kind of exciting because I love starting a new series and being completely unaware of what I'm getting myself into. But y'all recommended it, so, and it won this poll, so it has to be good, right? <laughs> so I'm really excited. There's one season of it apparently that's 24 episodes long, so good, good season. I'm excited, uh, and I've heard there's some OVAs, but I'll get to them whenever the series is over. But yeah, I'm excited. It's fall. It's time to start something new. Fall's my favorite season, so let's start Yona the Dawn and just have fun with it, right? So as always, I'll be reacting to the episode and then we'll talk about it later. Um, I may go back and rewatch it if I need to, to go over any plot points. But again, I'm really excited because I don't know what I'm getting into. So that's great. So yeah, let's, uh, let's do this, shall we? We are going to start Old Yona of the Dawn, episode one. Uh, the episode is called The Princess Yona. All right. So dealing maybe with some fantasy, maybe with some royalty stuff. I'm all about it. But yeah. I'm excited. I hope y'all enjoy this reaction, but let's do this, shall we? We are going to start Old Yona of the Dawn here in five, four, three, two, one. Let's go. Okay. Huh. So, well, I, I am really pleasantly surprised with that. I... First of all, it has to be a shoujo. And I'm sure y'all will comment down below. It has to be a shoujo, surely. Because I'm like, all right, got these, got the girl that's surrounded by the hot guys. It's like a fantasy romance. I, mm, I have a feeling I'm going to like this show because I, I love like medieval fantasy, like Game of Thrones. I'm watching Attack on Titan right now. I really like shows like that that have like that medieval element to it, like fantasy element to it. I really like it. And I'm getting that vibe with this show. And so there's that. But also, I'm a huge sucker for a good romance. And mm, this seems like, it seems like a reverse harem. Where it's the female lead with all the guys surrounding her. I'm all for it. <laughs> I'm all for it. You know what it reminds me of? Um, I, I've watched the original Fruits Basket from way back in like 2000, 2001, and I read the manga way back when. It's been a while. I've not, I've intentionally not read it over again, but I remember enough about Fruits Basket where the the leads, the three mains here before we found out old Suwon was the villain. Um, Suwon reminded me of Yuki and Kyo. Hawk reminded me of Kyo, and then Yona reminded me of Toru. So I was thinking like Fruits Basket vibes in this whole episode. I was like, man, I, Yoda is really, really funny. I, looking at this episode, starting it out, um, she seems so much more serious, but I'm guessing that this is taking place in the present time we're flashing back. And so of course we're, of course everybody's in the shadows except for Hack. And he's like, all right, Yona, let's go. So it looks like they're like gonna take back the kingdom. It does border the mountains. Cool. So, and her saying, I didn't know it was so cold outside the castle. So yeah, it's, I get like Princess Jasmine vibes from her. Like I get Princess Jasmine vibes from her, like from Aladdin, where she like sneaks off and gets away from the palace to, you know, find herself and everything and get to experience the, the common life. Except now it looks like, it seems like maybe they were exiled or she got hacked, hack, took her and ran away with her to save her from getting killed. Oh, interesting. So there's a couple things in the dialogue I wanted to go back through, but girl, I, I mean, 
mean, Suwon, very handsome guy. Very pretty boy. Sure, I, I get it. I, the cousin angle. <laughs> there, there's something about that. Um, but I get it. But, you know, Hack, he's childhood friend. He's been there this whole time. Just just there. And, you know, the, the lowly peasant. Like, come on. Um, mm, I am really, really excited to see old Yona. It sounds like, what it sounds like is that Yona it starts out as a spoiled princess and has to, like, after her father's died and she wants to regain her kingdom, has to, like, prove her worth. And and if she's surrounded by these guys that can turn into dragons, hell yeah. I, I'm all excited about this. Yes, please. I want to know about this world. Uh, we didn't get a lot of world building in this episode, but it was mainly to set up our bad guy to set up the whole idea of her being the... It was mainly to set up Yona's character and her relationship with Hack and the relationship with Suwon and kind of how all that works. And so I'm guessing in the next couple episodes we'll get into the whole thing about the dragons because the OP is promising me dragons. I I love Game of Thrones and the Targaryen family is my favorite. And I didn't even realize this going back and seeing the OP again. That's Suwon there with the crown and stuff looking evil and I didn't even put two and two together because we hadn't really met him yet. Oh, but like, I the Targaryens are my favorite in Game of Thrones. And so I'm like, oh, which going to the whole incest thing kind of ties to the Targaryens, um, I guess. But yeah, I am all about this. All about this. If Hawk can become a, a beautiful blue dragon, sure, why not? So the kingdom of, uh, what did they say there? The kingdom of Quoka that was once my castle. And so it's, it's this tiny kingdom, yeah. The king lived in Hiryu Castle, uh-huh, and he had no male heir and no or any queen to bear him one, so he just has 15-year-old daughter. And and I love that we get, like, we get some really nice, really nice foreshadowing of her character and build-up of how her character is. Like, Yona isn't dumb or anything. She's not airheaded, but she is kind of, like, a little narcissistic, a little self-conscious. Like, she's kind of spoiled. She's a spoiled princess. And she, like, wants to, you know, dress up and do her thing. And she's kind of a little bit whiny, a little bit bratty. But that's all to set up her character and how it's going to grow over the course of the series. So, totally cool with that. And so it says, this is the 10th year since the death of my father, the former king. Oh. Oh, okay. So, so that's the king talking. So the king is saying that it's been 10 years since he's taken the throne because his father died. Okay, so it's kind of like, kind of like Queen of England, like the throne just, it doesn't, as soon as you become of age, you don't become the king. It's whenever the king dies. Gotcha. Gotcha. And there's been no significant battles. Yep, 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 yep. And the, we've enjoyed prosperity on this land. So the, the current king, <laughs> I love the hack says she's such a child. The current king basically has said that there's been no issues with anything and it's been peace. And everything's been peaceful. I like that we get establishment that the king is pretty much just like Yona. Like he's kind of ditzy and kind of like goofy. But it's all, there's no ill will there. There's no harm there. He's just a really kind and benevolent person just like Yona. Mm. But that begs the question. That that makes it, and he's very much said this entire episode that he didn't want anything he was basically a peaceful king that wanted to be a pacifist. He didn't want to cause any harm or use anything that could be a weapon. And so, of course, that, you know, it sounds great and all, but that makes him a target. And apparently his nephew came in and was like, time to get rid of you and I want to take over the throne. Because it said it was his brother's son. My, my main thing is, and I know all of y'all are going to comment. <laughs> y'all are going to comment in the comments and be like, well, back in the day... <laughs> And you're not wrong. I get that, that back in medieval times, back in ancient times, lots of royal families married within royal families. In Game of Thrones, like I said, the whole Targaryen family, they all married brothers and sisters. It was all crazy. Um, and so I get that it's not uncommon. It's weird. <laughs> but I get that it's not uncommon. And she, granted, she, you know, thinks that she loves her cousin. And she's like, oh, yeah, we could totally get married. This will totally work out. <laughs> and th her dad being so against it, I want to go back and rewatch that because at the time I was like, oh, well, I just joked that he didn't want their family to be incestuous, but there's, there's probably more to it than that. And we just don't have it yet. So yeah, we established that Yona, Yona doesn't like her hair, which I think is ridiculous. Her dad says it's like a jewel and I agree. Yona's hair is beautiful. 
like that red flowy hair. My hair is stick straight. I just, I blow dry it and this is, I don't even have to straighten it. It's just stick straight. And so I'm like, girl, if I had your waves, mm -hmm. of course, everybody, lots of people are envious of each other's features. So I'm like, your hair is beautiful. And of course you have this red theme going on and Hack has this blue theme going on. Y'all are made for each other. And I, I love that Hack says, he's like, do you think her hair is bad? The dad says, and Hack's like, nah, if anything's wrong with her, it's her brain. <laughs> and he's so serious about it. Quiet name. I love it. I love that they're so childish. I'm rooting for them. I'm rooting for them as a ship already. I'm like, just, get, he's the gener one of the five generals. Marry him and get it over with. But mm, of course not. This series is not going to give us the easy way out. Absolutely not. I love that he grabs the teacup that she throws at him. And he just makes himself some tea. Hmm. Yeah. Lord Suwon has arrived. And it's like Hack knows exactly what she's doing. Which is so sad. Because Hack's like, ugh. You know, I feel bad for Hack in this episode. Because he's just, you know, it's clearly, clearly he likes Yona. I don't know if he loves her, but he clearly likes her. And so it's heartbreaking that he has to see Suwon. And so, yeah, establishing that they've been childhood friends, the three of them. And he's my cousin three years my senior. And, of course, he, like, is this tall, dashing man now. That's apparently the antagonist. I'm not surprised that the person that would come in and swoop in to try to take over the family and the kingdom would be the nephew, the father's brother's son. I'm assuming it's the father's younger brother, right? Hmm. But, yeah, it's so cute. Yona's, like, so, like... Like, kind and blushy and everything. And Suwon, man, pulling the wool over your eyes, right? And just doing the whole thing about them being childhood friends and everything like that. And the whole archery thing. And so I wanted to go back. I The whole engagement aspect where she lies and says that she's engaged to Hack and he's, like, really surprised by that. It's like, oh, man, you want it to be true. And so I wanted to go back to that whole scene about her wanting to marry him. And the dad's like, I would give you anything you desire. Beautiful hair, ornaments, flower garden, a royal villa. I would give you anything that is not a weapon. But no matter how you wish it, I cannot give you Suwon. So is it because he doesn't trust Suwon? Was the dad kind of suspicious of him and his brother's agenda? And so he's like, I don't want you to get hurt. So I can't do that. I want to go back and listen to that conversation again. He's like, you're the princess of this kingdom, and the man who marries you will become the next king. So, clearly he did not want Suwon to become king. So he obviously had some misgivings and mistrust of him from the get-go. I want to know who this dude with the black hair walking around is, because we don't see him. He's got, like, the little hat and everything. We don't see who the heck he is, but he's clearly working with Suwon. Clearly. And was trying to lure trying to get Yona and lured her over to Suwon. So that's weird. Hmm. And poor Hack. Hack has, Hack has to sit here and listen to her rave about how much she loves Suwon. That, that's sad. Poor guy. But yeah, is a son of my, son of my father's brother, Yu Hong. He is of royal blood, but it is my duty as a king to choose my heir. Hmm. So clearly he doesn't want his nephew being the heir. Interesting. You're a cowardly king who is too afraid to touch a weapon. So establishing that the king will not use a weapon to defend himself. And he knows it. He says he's a cowardly king. Your mother was captured and killed by insurgents. And then he's like, that danger goes in part. So he clearly thinks that something bad will happen if, if she marries Suwon. And that's why he won't take a new wife. And why he doesn't want her to marry him. Hmm. There's clearly more to the story and we just don't get it yet. And he doesn't want to tell her. Yeah. Does that mean it's all right for the man I marry to meet with misfortune? And that's true. It's like, am I not allowed to be happy? It's like, so do I get no say in all of this? Which is kind of sad because she's like, I'm going to be the queen and I don't, give it, I don't get to pick who I'm going to marry. So it's like, ugh. Hmm. Which is kind of creepy now. The fact that, so here's the thing. Did he... Did Suwon, he gets mad at her for a second when she gets cornered with him and she admits her feeling, her feelings for him. And he really, he, Suwon shows a little red flag there when he's like, do you want me to take you back to Hack's quarters because you're her, you're his betrothed, right? And it's like, 
it, it almost seemed like he was making like a jealous jab at Hack. Because then afterwards, when she was like, no, that's not it, he offers to just take her back to her room. So it's like, dude, why didn't you just offer her that in the first place? It was like he was just goading her. Like he was just teasing her. And that he shows kind of an odd side of himself there. But then it just subsides. He's like, Hack would be angry if he knew it was the two of us here alone. Uh, and then I like that he tries to ignore her. And I'm like, is he trying to ignore her because he doesn't want to get you know, emotions in the way, like he doesn't want to admit. And yeah, he just smacks her away. And and see, it sounded like he said, please don't come close to me. I may make a mistake. So it's like if he was planning to kill the king all along, is he's like, I don't want to make a mistake and accidentally hurt you before I kill the king because then I'll get called out and get suspicious. Is that it? And then he questions her whether or not she said she loved him or not. And then she's like, well, what if I do? And she's like, if I tell you that I love you, is it a mistake? Is it going to upset you? And then, yeah, he says, I can't let this happen. Yeah. And the truth of it is he doesn't want to get emotionally, you know, compromised because they grew up together. So he's like, I need to kill the king to take over. I don't want to get you involved. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, he says, I'm unfamiliar with things like this. It's like, dude, do you even like women? <laughs> I just, oh my gosh. This, I, it was really cute and funny. And I was like, okay, this is a shoujo. It's cutesy and funny. And it's going to be like Fruits Basket where it's all this fantasy stuff. And then go around on adventures. Or thing. Didn't think in the first episode we'd be having the king getting straight up murdered. And he gives her the hairpin. He gives her the hairpin, which is interesting. I'm like, why would Suwon give her the hairpin? And then he's flirty with her. It's like, and he says that he loves her hair. And it's beautiful red like the sky at dawn. So I'm like, she's going to cut, cut it. So I just, it's such a shoujo trope where she's like, and suddenly I loved my hair because this one guy complimented me. And then Hack getting in the middle of it all. I love it. I absolutely love it. Yes, please. And then, yeah, Hack telling, I mean, Suwon telling him to be on guard that something strange is up. And then he looked kind of suspicious walking away. But yeah, as soon as that door was open, I was like, oh, nah, he did. But I did not expect to see, I thought it was going to be the black-haired man. I did not expect it to be Suwon killing him. Oof. And then, yeah. I, oh, I didn't expect the king to die so soon. And then, yeah, she just gets traumatized because that's her dad. And then, of course, Hack is like, what's going on? And I love that we get bloodshed, like, right off the bat, man. They're about to kill. And it's the same guards from earlier when the king was giving his speech. It's the same guards that were beating the drum and everything. So this was, this was an inside job. This was during that whole speech where the king is like, peace and prosperity. The own guards, were they were already paid off. They're like, we're going to have a coup. And overthrow. It's been 10 years. We're going to overthrow this king and his daughter before she gets old enough to marry someone and they come in. We're going to give it to the nephew. Uh. And then, yeah, man, I love it. I love Hack coming in with this big ass spear and just coming in and slicing and dicing. Hell yeah. But I'm like, how does he become a dragon then? Because he doesn't, he just, you know, fights him off with the weapon. I'm like, are there only, and it said he was from the wind tribe and the wind like goes through the air, like around him. Ooh. Ooh. And then Sue one's there. Oh, I'm so excited. This is, this is much better than the fruits. I, at first I thought it was going to be like a love triangle between Sue Wan and Hack and Yona. And I was like, oh, it's going to be like fruits basket. It's going to be this little love triangle in the fantasy world. Mm, yes. I like this much better. So... I'm curious the circumstances of how they become dragons, if he even knows at this point. Um, why Yona cuts her hair, because her hair is cut in the ED. Obviously, I'm assuming they go into exile and they run away. Um, how, how they meet the others, because they said there are five guards, so Hack is one of them. So I'm assuming, are the other guards, like the other dragons, like there's the green-haired guy, the white-haired guy, the yellow-haired guy, and it looks like maybe the pinkish-haired guy, so there's four others. So are those the five guards then? Perhaps. Well, blue, white. Yeah, maybe. Perhaps. We'll have to see. But 
Yeah, this is really fun. I really like this. I it's not what I expected already. I I don't know. When you see hear Yona of the Dawn, I don't know what I was expecting, but I really like Yona's character and I, I love Hack. And I really like the twist of Suwon, the the cousin that's that would be king coming in and, and starting a coup. Fun times. I'm excited, y'all. I can't wait. So I'm curious to know what you guys saw this episode. I hope you all enjoyed this reaction. But yeah, I'm pretty excited to get into this series. This is going to be so much fun. So in the meantime, I hope you all have a wonderful week. Please stay safe. Take care. And yeah, I'll be back next week with episode two of Yona of the Dawn. Bye.